Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about physical and chemical properties as well as physical and chemical changes. We are going to learn that how they are related to each other and how they are going to be studied in chemistry classes. First, I'm going to talk about physical and chemical properties. The properties that you have for any chemical substances. Regarding the definition you see here in the slide, so it says physical properties can be observed or measured without changing the composition of the materials. So I'm going to talk about each part of this definition. First, it says physical property can be observed or measured. So let me talk about these two types of activity. Assume that you have a pen or pencil. Whenever you look at the, this object, the first thing you may say, you may talk about the color. The color is coming based on your observation. So we call color is a physical property. So whenever you are going to talk about the color, you are going to talk about one type of property of your object. One thing we need to pay attention, there is no change in the composition of material. What does that mean? If you look at the object, if you talk about the color, you are not going to change the composition of the substance. So we call that physical property some other physical property based on your observation. You may talk about shape. So let me add it here. Shape is another physical property. Based on your observation, you may get that one. So this is a physical property. So we do have a better definition for physical property. Whenever you smell, whenever you taste, but in general, in our classes, and specifically in our lab, we prefer not to smell or taste our chemical. It's obvious, but we are going to call them physical property. But we don't have this type of activity in our class. Another activity is, we may call that physical properties whenever you have measurements. So based on the measurements, you are going to talk about physical property because you don't change the composition of materials. So one of the physical property is size. So whenever you look at the objects, assume that you are going to see the pen or pencil. So you may use a ruler to measure the size. You measure length. So size is a physical property. You may talk about mass. You may weigh that. So mass is another physical property. So we are going to have a variety of properties based on observation, based on measurements, and we know that they are not going to change the composition. We don't change the composition of our materials. We still have our same material. For me, in our class, I may ask you to please pay attention. One of the physical property that mostly we talk about this in other videos, they are states of matter. So whenever you are going to talk about this object is solid, liquid, or gas. And I'm going to talk about this terminology in other videos, and I'm sure you remember the meaning of boiling, melting, and we are going to talk about solubility in other chapter as well. So let me give it you one example to make sure you have this understanding regarding physical properties. Assume that I'm going to talk about this object, copper. So I ask you please look at this photo, and based on this observation, you are going to say something regarding the material you will see here. So I'm going to talk about properties that I can extract from this image. I may say the color. So color is one of the physical property. We may talk about that. 
you may talk about appearance. So you may say it's shiny. So based on your observation, you still have copper, copper and you didn't change that one to anything new. This is the solid based on this color, based on this photo, we may talk about the solid liquid and gas at least at 25 degrees Celsius room temperature here. If we are going to have measurements, we may melt or boil and we will find this information. So these numbers represent melting point and boiling point. So we measure the boiling and melting point of the our objects. So measurement is one part of physical properties. If I'm going to categorize in one table some main and major physical properties, I'm going to talk about these physical properties. Mass, based on measurements. Volume, based on measurements. And you know that relationship between mass and volume, we call that density. So density is one of the physical property. Talking about the state of matter, solid, liquid, gas, based on your observation. So this is another physical property. Anything related to the measurements, so we call that physical property. So as you see here, we have a list of physical properties. So you may add something by yourself. So you may say, for example, I'm going to add size. Size is one example of measurement. So we do have physical properties. How about chemical properties? Let me talk about chemical properties by another point of view. For physical properties, we do have very clear and very straight definitions. But for chemical properties, we need to remember that we are going to describe the ability of a substance to make a new substance, to interact with other substances. So let me write here, ability of a substance to make a new substance. As you see here, we are talking about ability. So we may talk about one potential properties that we need to address it. So whenever we work in the lab, always lab portion of our chemistry classes is going to address and verify one ability we call that chemical properties. We are going to see if we have this material, can this material make something new how is going to make a new substance easily how is going to make another substance by easiest conditions so there are something we are going to work on so as you see here in this image if we have for example this example is going to talk about the iron and based on the this color we may find that we have something new. Iron intends to make something new. Iron has this ability to make something new. And we see this something new, it appears here. So we call that chemical properties. So we are going to talk about ability of substances. Another chemical properties are going to place in one table and talk about them talking about how they are acids, how they are base, how they are flammable or not, or something like this. That we are going to talk about this, all properties in the next chapters. But here, I'm going to make sure you understand, we, whenever we are going to talk about this compound is acid or base, it's, it means it's going to react with something new. It's going to make something new. So that is why we call that they are chemical properties right now before working on the examples let me finish talking about physical and chemical changes and after that we work on our some examples physical change whenever we have change in physical property so 
let me write in general change of physical properties so we call that physical change one example of physical property it was a state of matter solid for example if I change solid to liquid if I change solid to liquid it means I'm going to change one of the physical property solid to another one liquid this change we call that physical change please understand it says we do not change the composition of the material assume that you have ice and you are going to change that one to water at the beginning you had water in solid form ice at the end you have water in liquid form you still have water you didn't make something new so that is why we call that physical change so whenever we say physical change we are talking about one change that is going to make change of one of the physical or more than physical more than one physical properties but we still have the same substance one of the examples I ask you to pay attention whenever we add sugar to water whenever you add sugar to water you are going to make something new but it's not totally new it's not totally new it's based on adding sugar to water you still have sugar and water in your mixture and you can easily you can easily separate sugar from the water by probably you have the correct answer evaporation evaporation so you just need to have this mixture on the flame on the flame on the oven on the stove and whenever water evaporate boil it is going to convert it to gas so water skip this mixture and we still have sugar so it means you can say have you can still have sugar and water so right now i'm going to talk about chemical changes so i am sure you can easily say that chemical change it means when we have change in physics change in chemical property change in chemical property so but one thing i may ask you to pay attention in this part in this part let me highlight that one change of composition so whenever you are going to have a chemical change you absolutely have a new compound so it means you already changed the composition in chemistry in next chapter we are going to talk about chemical changes chemical changes we call them reaction or chemical reactions so this term reaction it means we are going to talk about chemical change another example i may say whenever we had that example if we have iron rust it means iron is combining by oxygen in the atmosphere so in the previous example uh, if you remember that we did have a chemical change and we saw that one whenever we are going to address this ability of the substance we need to call that chemical change right now i'm going to remind you any physical changes any physical changes of a state of matter we call them phase change we still have the same substance so they called physical change so if you hear something about boiling so you are going to change liquid to gas so we call that physical change melting you are still have the same substance but you are going to change phase or state of matter we call that physical change so i may ask you to memorize these six terminology boiling 
melting, subliming, condensing, freezing, and deposition. All of these six terms, we call them physical changes. For boiling, we may have like evaporation as well as vaporization. For our class, we accept all these three as one term as they are going to represent one change, one phase change. And we may use that one as interchangeable terms in our class. Right now, I'm going to give it you a couple examples of physical changes, and it was enough for this part of our class. So, example of physical change. If you change the size, as you see here, if you change the size, you still have the same substance. So, we call that physical change. Change of shape. If you change shape, you still have the same substance. So, physical changes can be changed the, can be changed the size or shape or any other physical properties. I may ask you to please pay attention whenever we have chemical changes, most likely we have these terms. So these terms represent chemical changes. If we say tarnishing, if we say burning, if we say rusting, if we say reacting, so they are terminology we are going to use to represent our chemical changes. Right now, I may ask you to think about these examples as learning check. Question says, classify each of the following as change of state or change of shape. All of them, they are physical change because we are going to change it. State of matter or we are going to change the shape. Think about it, and after that, I'm going to talk about each one. So you may pause the video and resume after having the answers. So we still have the same substance. This is a physical change. So we are going to change shape. So I'm going to write it here as shape, change of shape. Water boiling. So boiling, it means we are going to have phase change. So a state is the correct answer. Melt, this is the, another terminology you need to memorize for phase change. Freezing, so ice forming in a freezer. So this is the another one. And last one is obvious, we are going to have change of shape. So if you would like you know which one is which, this is the correct answer. Another question, it says, which one is physical, which one is chemical? Properties or physical or chemical changes. So first one, it says ice melts. So for melting, we call that physical change. So it's this statement, so we may call talk about the physical property as well. Copper is shiny. Talking about appearance, so this is one example of physical property. Look at this one, this term. This term is the one of the term we are going to talk about reaction with oxygen. Reaction with oxygen. So burning, it means reaction with oxygen. So this is a chemical change. <clears throat> a silver knife can tarnish. This is a terminology I may ask you to think about that. If we call that chemical change. And finally, a magnet removes iron particles from a mixture. We are going to talk about the same substance and we don't change the composition. So it's going to represent a physical, it's going to talk about a physical property for iron. It attracts the uh, iron particles in this example and last example for this video so let me talk about this let me talk about this it says classify each of the following changes as physical or chemical so again 
I may ask you to remember that the terminology burning means chemical, melting. We are going to have physical change. We still have the same toasting marshmallow. So I'm sure that you are going to talk about something new. Baking, cooking, they are related to each other. Toasting absolutely would be very similar. So we are going to change the size or shape and we are going to have frosting as a chemical change. So something like this one. And the last example, please review that one. You have the correct answers. So there are some questions you will see in this topic and hope you can get the correct answer for all of the questions related to this topic. Thank you for watching this video.